Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Welcome to A Level and EP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss past paper questions from March 2025, Paper 1. As always we do, we will discuss these questions in detail so you can improve your conceptual understanding of physics and also you can have better understanding of these exam questions. Let's study together, let's improve together. Question 1 says, which quantity is a scalar quantity? So first of all, we need to understand what is the difference between scalar and vector. Scalar quantities have magnitude, but they don't have direction. But vector quantities, to describe vector quantities, we need magnitude and also we need direction. So, if you look at these given quantities, force for example, force is a vector quantity. So, when we say force is equal to 4 newtons, we also need to say force is to the right, to the left. So, the force is a vector quantity. So, this is vector. Momentum is also a vector quantity. Momentum and velocity, these two are vectors so they have the same direction so these two quantities are vector means direction of momentum is the same as direction of velocity so these two quantities means these two vectors they have same direction is very important point to understand so it means these two quantities they are vector and they have same direction velocity itself Velocity is a vector quantity, so when we describe velocity, we cannot describe velocity completely without talking about direction. So when we say 5 meters per second, that is not complete description of velocity. So we need to say 5 meters per second to the right, to the left. So that's reason velocity is a vector because it cannot be explained cannot be described fully without mentioning direction so this is also vector quantity work is a scalar quantity so when we describe work we can simply say four joules of work is done you no need to say about direction so work is a scalar quantity so we can simply say this is scalar quantity so the answer for this one has to be t i know most of you understand what is scalar what is vector but maybe you have simply memorized that scalar has magnitude but vector has magnitude and direction but the better way of understanding is that you need to understand vector quantities cannot be explained fully without mentioning of direction but scalar quantities can be explained can be described without mentioning of direction simply they don't have direction the second question says what is the effect of systematic error on the measurement of a physical quantity so if there is a systematic error then all the measured values will be on one side of actual value means all the values they will be greater than actual value or smaller than actual value it will affect the accuracy but it will not affect the precision systematic error if there is a systematic error values can be precise mean values can be close to each other they can be very precise we can get consistent repeated measurements mean precision is related to consistency of repeated measurements if there is a systematic error repeated measurements can be still very close to each other so systematic error does not affect precision now let me explain you a little bit in detail imagine that this is this line is representing actual value actual value if there is a systematic error so all the values can be greater than actual value but still they can be precise I mean they can be very close to each other the range will be small if the range is small it means readings are precise higher precision are these values all the values they can be lower than 
actual value but still they can be precise systematic error if there is a systematic error measurements can be precise or simply you can say systematic error does not affect precision so now if you look at given options it limits the precision of the measured values as i mentioned before precision is related to consistency of repeated measurements and it is not related to systematic error so it limits the precision so it can be due to random error so so random error effect precision so we can say it is can be due to random error it can limits the precision so it means this is not possible answer it limits the range of values so range and precision they are linked together if the range is small it means values are more precise if the range is wider values are less precise so this is also linked with random error so due to random error range can be greater so that will affect the precision so this is also not possible answer it results in repeated measurements having different values from each other so you see different values from each other so this is also due to random error means every time when you take measurement you are getting different answer every time so that is also due to random error it results in the measured value being different it results in the measured value being different from correct value means the measured value is different than actual value is different than actual value so that can be due to systematic error so we can say this can be due to systematic error so the answer for this one is d so c is also not answer third question says a car is accelerated by a constant resultant force of 300 newtons for 5.0 seconds the variation with time of the velocity in centimeters per second of the car is shown what is the mass of the car so in this case it is given to us resultant force is acting on the car so the car is accelerating so from where we need to start this one so we will start this one with f is equal to m a so if we have value of a we can find out value of m because f is the resultant force this one is already given to us so when you read question in physics you need to understand how you can find out the unknown value so in this case unknown value is m so you need to understand how we can relate unknown with the known so for this one you have to use f is equal to ma so this is the approach how we use in physics so we can say resultant force so f you need to understand is the resultant force then what is the value of the resultant force is given to us that is equal to 300 newtons mass we need to find out so we need acceleration now if you look at the given graph we have velocity here we have time so the gradient of this one that is equal to acceleration so simply in this case we can say acceleration is delta v by delta t so simply we can rewrite this one 300 m we need to find out so what is delta v so you can see from here from this point to this point so what is the change in velocity it changes from one it changes from 30 to 150 so 150 minus 30 but the unit you need to understand the unit of this one is centimeter so we have to multiply with 10 to minus 2 to convert into meters and this has to be divided by this time taken from here to here time taken for the change of velocity so this time taken is 5.0 seconds now we can simplify so we have 300 here we have m so if we solve this one we will get in this case 0.24 so the mass will be equal to 300 
divided by 0.24. So if we solve this one, we will get 1 to 50 kgs. So the closest answer we have to find up to 2SF. So this is the answer. So 1300 kgs. So the answer for this question is this. So this is how you need to approach. Physics is you need to develop your way of thinking how you're going to handle new problems so first of all try to relate unknown and the known values means how you can go from known values to unknown so that bridge you need to understand for example we have known values and here you have unknown so how you can use known values and you can find unknown so this is what you need to understand so you need the equation for that in this case f is equal to ma question 4 says an aircraft initially stationary on a runway takes off with a speed of 85 kilometers per hour in a distance of no more than 1.20 kilometers I mean the maximum distance is 1.20 kilometers we need to find out what is the minimum constant expression very important one constant it means we can use SWOT equations for the aircraft so how we can approach so we need to find out acceleration and in this case it is given to us aircraft started from rest so u is equal to zero it reaches velocity v that is equal to 85 kilometers per hour and the distance it has traveled so we can simply say it has traveled this distance and this value of s now uh, we can say is equal to 1.20 kilometers and we need to find out value of a so simply we have to find a so we can use 2as this is equal to v square minus u square so in this case u is equal to zero so we can write down a will be equal to v square minus u square divided by 2s so we are taking to the right positive so here we are taking to the right is positive and so but one thing you need to be careful is that units we have to convert so we have 85 kilometers per Hour. we want to convert into meters per second so first thing you can write down 85 so kilometers we want to get rid of kilometers so we can say this is one kilometer so if you multiply with 1000 meters so it means this is just one and we have hour here we want to get rid of hours so we can simply say one hour here and one hour as how many seconds 3660 times 60 so now if you look at the units this unit hour you can cancel with this kilometer you can cancel with kilometers and this is seconds now if we solve this one we will get 85 this is multiplied by 1000 and this is divided by 3600 and here the unit is meters per second so if we solve we will get 23.61 meters per second and now simply we need to plug in values but before we plug in values we need to understand u is equal to zero so here simply we have v square divided by 2s so this is over displacement so this is s so v in this case is 23.61 square divided by 2 and multiply by so you have to convert this one into meters so this is 1200 meters now if we simplify we will get 0.23 meters per second per second so the answer for this question is a question 5 says an object is fired upwards from horizontal ground the object has an initial velocity of 20 meters per second at an angle of 45 degrees to the horizontal air resistance is negligible 
which statement describes the speed of the object after it is fired until immediately before it reaches the ground. I mean we fire but it doesn't hit the ground yet just before hitting the ground. So in this case simply we fire the ball so you can imagine launch from here it will reach the peak and then it will come down. So this is trajectory of the ball. But in this case we need to understand is that at the top at this point vertical velocity will be zero. So we will say v v will be equal to zero but the horizontal velocity v h will not be equal to zero. This will be equal to the initial value we can say u initial value time cosine of theta. So velocity will never be zero. It will decrease and it will have minimum value at this point then again it will start increasing. So the value of the speed at this point then this point will be the same by conservation of energy. When the ball is rising up it is gaining GP. So kinetic energy is decreasing so the speed is decreasing and when it is falling down kinetic energy is increasing potential energy is decreasing. So this is the main idea. We can also sketch like this. So if we sketch V on Y axis and time on x axis so it has certain value of the speed here it will decrease it will go to minimum value then it will increase again so just before hitting the ground these two values will be same so this is the main idea you need to understand its speed decreases to a value greater than zero yes then increases to 20 meters per second. So this is you can see at this point the speed of this one will be equal to VH. This will be U cosine of initial angle means angle at this point this angle. So option A is correct. Its speed decreases to a value greater than zero then increases to a value. This statement is correct but this is incorrect greater than 20 meters per second so B is not correct answer. Its speed decreases to zero. No this is wrong. Its speed decreases to zero. This is wrong. It This is also wrong actually. Less than. It has to be 20 if there is no A resistance. So the answer for this question is A.